Hey there, my name is Uma. In this video, we're going to be talking about the computer's operating system. Let's jump into it. There are many types of operating system out there. The popular ones are Windows, Mac OS, Chrome OS, and Linux. In the barest form, a computer is simply a machine that receives, stores, and processes data. It does all of this by executing instructions given by a user or an application. These instructions range from opening a folder, creating files, deleting folders, running scripts, and so much more. Modern operating systems have beautiful graphic user interfaces that makes performing these instructions very easy. To open a file or a folder, you simply use a mouse and double click on it. Earlier computers did not have the graphics user interfaces that we have now. To open a file or a folder, you would manually have to type that command into a terminal. A lot of lightweight Linux operating systems and web servers still work like this. Windows, Mac OS, and Linux still allow you to communicate with the computer via the GUI or the terminal. As you know, the computer has so many parts, but the brain of the computer, the part that handles all the logic, is the central processing unit. The CPU has so many functions, however, for this video, I want to focus on the memory and how it relates to how the CPU processes data. There are two types of computer memory, primary and secondary. Secondary memory is usually a separate external storage device like a hard drive or a flash drive that can be connected to a computer to transfer data as needed. Primary memory, on the other hand, is the really exciting part. It's the part of the memory that comes with the computer. It is inbuilt into the computer. The primary memory is further broken down into two parts, the RAM and the ROM. ROM stands for read-only memory. It is non-volatile, meaning whatever data that you store in there is permanently there until you choose to delete it. When you download something from the internet, create a new document, or install an application, the data that is created is stored on the ROM. You can turn off your computer and when you turn it back on, all that information is still there. The second part of the primary memory is the RAM. It stands for Random Access Memory. The RAM is a super fast high speed storage that the computer and its application utilize to store and access temporary data. It can be thought of like a short term memory for the computer. It stores the data of programs that you are actively using so it can be accessed quickly. When you open a document or an application, the data for that application is brought into the RAM so you can easily work with it without any lag. When you have multiple applications and tasks running, as we all do, the RAM allows you to quickly switch between these tasks, remembering where you are in one task when you switch to another one. The RAM is volatile though, meaning when you turn off your computer, that memory is erased. Make sure you hit save. <laughs> Many programs like Google Chrome, Adobe, Photoshop, and even the native operating system load their core files into the RAM when the computer boots up. This is why some apps automatically open up when you just turn on your computer. The RAM only has a limited amount of space and it's usually way smaller than the ROM. The ROM storage can go as high as 16 terabytes, but the average user only needs about 200 gigabytes. On the other hand, the RAM has an average of 8 gigabytes, but can go as high as 32 gigabytes on some high-end computer. With all of this, the question then becomes, with only 8 gigabytes of memory, how does the computer decide which applications to allocate memory to when you're running multiple applications? You see, at any point in time, there is hundreds of processes and thousands of tasks occurring simultaneously, simultaneously, <laughs> simultaneously on the CPU. To optimize for performance, the CPU has to prioritize those tasks. Any active application typically runs in the foreground. This means when you click on an item with your mouse or type on something with the keyboard, fulfilling tasks for the active application gets the top priority. And hence, applications in the foreground are given the most memory to execute their task. Most processes by comparison run in the background they get a lower priority and have to momentarily step aside when you tell your computer or an application to do something. Say you have Microsoft Word open and you're typing a document. If you minimize the Word window and open the Google Chrome tab to check your email or browse the internet, Google Chrome is given a higher priority because it's active in the foreground. 
In situations where you have an application that requires a lot of memory, like a PC video game or video and editing software, a good amount of memory might be dedicated to the application for better performance. And depending on the size of your memory, that might not be enough. There are still tons of background processes that need to be executed. The operating system cannot devote all of its memory to one application. Having lots of applications open in the foreground at the same time, all competing for memory with each other and with the background processes as well, can cause poor performance. The memory you have might not be enough for all the applications that you have open. This can cause starvation, a situation where a process is postponed indefinitely because resources required for the execution is never allocated to it. It can also cause deadlock, a situation where two or more processes need some resource to complete their execution, but those resources are held by other processes. This is one of the reasons why you get a message saying the application is not responding. Memory allocated to that application that is not responding might have been allocated to another application with a higher priority, or the application is requesting memory to perform a task, but there just isn't any more to give. There are complicated processes that happen in the background using concepts like semaphores and mutexes to ensure starvation and deadlock don't happen. For the most part, they work, they do a good job, but they all have their pitfalls. We can go into that in a later video. The computer operating system is a work of art. The designs are getting more and more efficient. The new 8GB Apple M1 chip performs considerably better than some 16GB memory chips from other machines in some aspects. This is because Apple manufactures the chip themselves so they can optimize the operating system to better utilize the power of the chip. At the end of the day, the higher memory you have, the better performance you can get out of your computer depending on how memory intensive the tasks you are running are. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and catch you next time. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy the video of me explaining what happens when you browse the internet. Click here to check it out.